Hello everyone, I am the Meta Kirby and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck techs. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander recently shipped out from the Street Fighter 2 secret lair, Ken Burning Brawler. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description. It will really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is with my Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. In fact, patrons got a chance to see this video earlier. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Ken is a 4-2 human warrior with prowess for 1 generic and 2 red. However, since he has an activated ability with a red-white hybrid mana cost, he has a red-white color identity. When you do activate this ability, Ken gains first strike until end of turn. This is quite important since Ken's triggered ability occurs when he deals combat damage. And since he has a toughness of 2, we'd rather he survive combat by striking first. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. You know how it is. In any case, when Ken deals combat damage, you're able to cast a sorcery spell from your hand for free as long as its mana value is less than or equal to the combat damage Ken dealt. It's important to note that with the way this ability is worded, it doesn't matter if Ken dealt combat damage to a creature or a player, his Shoryuken ability will trigger. What I love about Ken is that he's an interesting compromise between Voltron and Spell Slinging. You want him to deal as much damage as possible in order to free cast any bomb of a sorcery in your hand. Even then, 4 power to start with is great and he even has prowess, which is a built-in way to increase it further. So, since he has to first be powerful in order to free cast powerful sorceries, let's go over how to boost his power and combat skills. Sword of Feast and Famine, Sword of Fire and Ice, Sword of Hearth and Home, Sword of Life and Shadow, Sword of Sinew and Steel, and Sword of Truth and Justice not only give Ken plus 2 plus 2, but protection from 2 colors. This can allow him to potentially go through any creatures opponents have without getting blocked to thus deal commander damage to the opponent. Not only that, but you'll also trigger Shoryuken as well as the sword's abilities. For me, these were the 6 best swords of X and Y for the deck, with the first one being the best one. Being unable to untap all lands outside of green is no joke. Prowler's Helm and Rogue's Passage are some more ways of getting through opponent's defenses besides the protection from 2 colors provided by those swords. While the equipment doesn't stop him from getting blocked by walls, the land gives him outright unblockability. Sure, it's cost, 4 mana and tapping, but our sorceries are going to be free anyways, so he might as well. Especially with Kedis Ember Claw Familiar in the deck. If Ken is powerful enough and getting through to opponent's faces, we can then spread that level around with Kedis. This is the best familiar for Voltron decks after all. Unfortunately, the damage dealt via this ability will not trigger Shoryuken because it's not combat damage. Going back to protecting Ken, Swiftfoot Boots, Champion's Helm, Commander's Plate, and Hammer of the Zahn do the job nicely. We want to avoid giving Ken Shroud because we want to be able to equip more things to him. The plate is some more protection a la the swords while giving him a bigger PT boost. The hammer is amazing here, making him indestructible, plus giving him a power boost. Not only that, but it can attach itself to Ken when entering the battlefield, as well as attaching any other equipment to him when entering the battlefield. Ardent Intrepid Archaeologist does something similar in that you can spam any amount of equipment onto Ken, thus bypassing any cost for equipping them. This deck is all about bypassing all kinds of costs. Robe of Stars is another amazing way to protect Ken by phasing him out. With the way phasing works, any cards attached to Ken will also phase out, thus allowing you to protect his equipment as well from mass artifact destruction spells, so don't forget about that. Do also keep in mind though that this equipment is white, so if he were to have protection from white, you cannot equip it to him. Quietus Spike and Basilisk Collar are also somewhat ways to protect Ken in combat since they give him death touch. Since you can give him first strike for just one red or white mana, he'll kill whatever blocks him before it has the chance to deal him combat damage. Assuming, of course, those blockers don't also have First Strike, Double Strike, or Triple Strike. As a bonus, the Spike halves that player's life after receiving combat damage, and the Caller gives lifelink. Sword of the Animus is more equipment that boosts power and toughness, but more importantly ramps for a basic land when the equipped creature attacks. The best thing about this equipment is the trigger timing since it's just for attacking. So this sword is absolutely amazing here, along with the previously mentioned Sword of Hearth and Home. Halvar God of Battle and Two-Handed Axe give Ken Double Strike which is amazing. If Ken hits twice, then Shoryuken triggers twice, as do any of the Sword of X and Y he's equipped with. Granted, the Axe gives Double Strike when sent on an adventure, again, still weird that an inanimate object can go on an adventure, but I digress. 
but you can then cast it from exile as an equipment that doubles Ken's power whenever he attacks. That's amazing because Shoryuken depends on Ken's power. Keep in mind that this equipment is red if he were to have protection from wet. Halvar can be similar cast for something else, Sword of the Realms. Unfortunately, it's one or the other since it's an MDFC and not an adventure. That being said, any of these sides are amazing so it depends on the situation. I usually keep it safe and cast this as the sword because it gives Ken plus 2 plus 0, vigilance, and it returns him to our hand if he were to die. As for hitting opponents multiple times, how about going about it via multiple combat steps? The deck is running Karlak, Fury of Avernus, and Ryu, Storm's Edge, not to be confused with Ryu, Ken's friend and rival, as ways to get an additional combat step, giving Ken more chances of triggering Shoryuken. Granted, they only trigger if it's the first combat step, but we also don't infinitely have many combat steps. You can also just get extra combat steps with extra combat sorceries, like World at War, Waves of Aggression, Seize the Day, Relentless Assault, and Fury of the Horde. However, I opted out of these because they're one-time use only for being sorceries. Yes, that does synergize with the theme of the deck, which is why I'm still suggesting them if you want to run them, but I prefer getting extra combat steps each turn that Karlak and Ryu survive on the board. Back to the topic at hand, Stram Senior Edificer and Pure Seal Paladin are included due to how many equipment are in the deck. Each time we cast an equipment spell, we draw a card. As a bonus, the Paladin has us pay zero to equip equipment to Ken. In this sense, it's slightly better than Arden, since we don't have to wait until combat to freely equip equipment to him. Stonehewer Giant, Inventor Sphere, and Axe Guard Armory are also included due to the equipment-based strategy of the deck. The Giant can be used multiple times while the lands require getting sacrificed. It's a good thing that the deck bypasses so many costs if we're also losing lands. The equipment I end up tutoring for most is Hammer of Nazam, since that gives Ken indestructible, a boost in power, and auto-attaches as well as auto-attaching any further equipment. Reconnaissance is the final card for the Voltron aspect of the deck. With the way this enchantment works, you can attack with Ken, deal combat damage, and then untap him and remove him from combat during the end of combat step of the combat phase. This way, Ken is untapped and ready to deal combat damage as a blocker. Yes, if Ken is blocking, he's also dealing combat damage, so keep that in mind. Unfortunately, if Ken is blocked by multiple creatures, he will not trigger multiple times. He'll only trigger multiple times if he's dealing combat damage multiple times, i.e. double strike and triple strike. Alright, now for the most customizable part of the deck. Which sorceries are you going to want to be cheating with Shoryuken? I chose board wipes that leave Ken alive, ways to draw cards, generate mana, and a couple of reactive effects. I know, pretty standard and boring. I do have a couple of interesting bombs in here though, but this is honestly the part of the deck tech that I leave to you, the viewer. Sure, you might get some ideas from my own spells, but at the end of the day, the fun with Ken is being able to free cast a huge sorcery whenever he connects, and that will always make your opponents uneasy. So whatever insanity you want to include is on you. As for me, Invincible Him is an amazing card that I love cheating with Shoryuken. You gain an absurd amount of life. Sure, gaining massive amounts of life is usually mutant commander, but when your Voltron deck is light on creatures, you need a healthy amount of life against those aggro decks. Speaking of, Stormherd and Amaria's Call are two more beefy sorceries you can cast for free. Starting at 40 life, Stormherd will already have a big opportunity of creating a large enough herd of Pegasi, but imagine casting this off of Invincible Him. Amaria's Call doesn't create as many flyers, but it doesn't take up a slot in the deck since its backside is a land with the potential of entering the battlefield untapped. Along this vein, you can also add spells like Triplicate Spirits, Spectral Procession, Imperial Oath, Acacian Town, Imperial Storm, Devil's Playground, Mascot Exhibition, and Skittering Invasion, just to name a few, to cheat multiple tokens onto the battlefield with Shoryuken. I tried some of these, but in the end felt like I'd rather prevent getting attacked into or wiping the board constantly than creating a handful of weak creature tokens whenever Ken connects. But if you like these kinds of strategies, you can go for that too. To that end, I'm running Crawl Space and Silent Arbiter. If we're only going to be getting attacked by one or two creatures, then an untapped Ken with a slew of equipment might be a big enough deterrent. Also, we're only attacking with Ken anyways. And if anything did pass by, Maze of Ith and Core Haven are included for good measure. That way we can deal with that straggler. Keep in mind that we can also use the maze defensively. If Ken were to somehow die in combat due to some unforeseen combat tricks, we could just prevent any combat damage that would be dealt to him albeit also preventing any damage that he will do too. Keep in mind that Maze of Ith doesn't tap for mana, so do not count it as a landslot. Going back to bombs, as I mentioned earlier, I'd rather be wiping the board than creating handfuls of weenie tokens. Volcanic Vision, Immolating Gyre, Chandra's Ignition, Single Combat, Slash the Ranks, and Divine Reckoning get the job done. 
These are the decks board wipes and are amazing when you get to cast them for free off Shoryuken. I especially like Volcanic Vision because it also doubles as a way to recover your best instant or sorcery from the graveyard. This being any protective effect or other bomb in sorcery form. Speaking of the graveyard, Mystic's Mastery and Wake the Past are amazing cards to cast for free. If our graveyard has a bunch of instants or sorceries, we can cast one for free with Mizzix's Mastery. Unfortunately, we cannot overload it for free, but that's okay. If further along in the game we have the mana for it, we'll be casting a ton of very high mana value spells with it all for free. Wake the Pass also helps us recover from any overloaded Vandal Blast or other mass artifact destruction spell. Last thing we need is to lose all of our precious equipment or mana rocks. Depending on your meta, you can lean much heavier into this effect with spells like Triumphant Reckoning, Open the Vaults, and Brilliant Restoration. I don't have a meta per se, since I don't have a dedicated playgroup and I'm always testing online via Cockatrice, so I'm testing my decks against all kinds of environments within the deck's power level. But if your meta is heavy on board wipes, adding one more or even all of these might be a good call. At the very least, add Wake the Past as I have. Faithless Looting, Tormenting Voice, Wild Guest, Cathartic Reunion, Honor the God Pharaoh, Pirate's Pillage, and Seeds to Spoils are some ways to fill said graveyard, although they're more for digging through the deck. Being red-white means not being able to have as good card draw as other colors do, but at least we can make do with these. Keep in mind that even if you're casting them for free, you still have to discard cards as the additional cost. Jessica's Will is another way to sort of draw cards since it's impulsive draw. In any case, this card is absolutely busted anyways. However, keep in mind that if you cast this for free, the mana you add to your mana pool will be in there during your combat phase. Once that phase ends, you lose your mana. So this is one of those sorceries you might want to cast without Shoryuken. Speaking of mana, Brass's Bounty is another great bomb to cast for free. Sure, it's more impactful the more lands you have, but at least you can keep those lands open if you're able to cast it for free, and you'll get all those treasures. So good. Speaking of mana on standby, since we're casting all these spells for free, how about we just spend 3 generic mana on them? That's what it costs for Lithiform Engine and Mirari to copy them. Imagine casting a 10 mana spell like Stormherd for free to then pay only 3 generic mana when it enters the stack in order to copy it. Super busted. While the engine requires tapping down, meaning you can only really use it once, it can also copy activated abilities, triggered abilities, and permanent spells, so you could even use it to copy Shoryuken itself if you wanted to free cast a different sorcery in your hand, or if you wanted to copy some equipment spell. This card is too good for this deck. Mirari on the other hand is a triggered effect so you don't have to tap it down. Thus, any instant or sorcery you cast, you pay 3 generic and you copy it. You can even save that 3 mana altogether with Arcane Bombardment and Double Vision. Double Vision triggers on its own for free, but it's just for the first instant or sorcery you cast, which is okay. Just make sure you don't cast any before you cast the one you want copied. Arcane Bombardment is crazy good because it exiles instants and sorceries from your graveyard, and then you cast copies of those exiled spells for free. If this thing tastes on the board long enough, some true insanity will unfurl. The following cards in the deck are the essential responses, card advantage, and mana acceleration of any deck. It's pretty clear that the deck has no problems getting rid of creatures even if we had to hard cast any of the deck's board wipes. However, it's still good to run cards like Wear and Tear, Chaos Warp, and Generous Gift to help deal with more problematic permanents, especially the last two since they can hit lands. Last thing we need is getting locked behind someone else's Maze of If. Speaking of lands, Sokenzan, Crucible of Defiance, and Aganjo, Seed of the Empire, are some more great interaction that don't take up slots in the deck. So Kensan is a great way of creating chump blockers in a pinch at instant speed that can't be countered except by a literal handful of cards in a dozen thousand card pool. A Ganjo helps us potentially kill off an attacker or blocker, which is good news for Ken. Boros Charm and Teferi's Protection are some more de facto protective effects that should go in the deck. Not so much else to say about them, but at least we don't need too many of them. As for card draw, War Room and Bonders Enclave get the job done without taking up slots in the deck. Vanilla Ken is enough to allow us to activate any of these, and since we expect our mana to be readily available, they are great to activate at the end of the turn before ours. Speaking of mana, Wayfarer's Bauble, Navigation Orb, Burnished Heart, Solemn Simulacrum, and Core Cartographer is what I'm running in terms of land ramp effects. Beggars can't be choosers, but between these and the basic land ramping swords, we're good to go. In any case, can cost just 3 mana to cast and all of the really expensive spells are expected to be free cast anyways. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Boros Signet, and Talisman of Conviction are the deck's mana rocks because we can't be expected to run it without any of them. You could also run Jeweled Lotus if you wanted to, since that alone is enough to cast Ken due to his casting cost. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands, 
The decks running all 7 fetch lands, all pine meadow, sacred foundry, spectator seating, sundown pass, battlefield forge, rugged prairie, command tower, and ancient tomb, as well as 5 of each basic land. As with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget, whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This brew is just an idea of how to build around Ken Burning Brawler. The deck is pretty straightforward in terms of piloting. Make Ken strong, cheat splashy sorceries. But the real challenge lies in balancing those effects as well as choosing which heavily costed sorceries you want to be cheating with Shoryuken. However, if the immersion break is too much for you, we still have to wait for the universes within versions of the Street Fighter 2 cards to be printed. That being said, if you're interested in the decklist of this spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the Brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am Commander Kirby, and happy brewing.